This is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is the full pump down procedure on this air conditioning system. So we're going to take you in for an up close view of this, and we're going to take you step by step through this process, but we're getting ready to move this air conditioner from this location to another location. And if you haven't already, make sure to check out our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning book. We have a full chapter on the pump down procedure, but we go over system preparation, we go over checking the charge, troubleshooting, recovery. So make sure you check that out over at acservicetech.com. Now we're gonna get started. I wanna go over five quick points on pumping a system down before we get started. And the one very important tip is to make sure that you don't have micro channel coil here. You wanna make sure that you're only pumping a system down that has copper tube and fin because the tubing will have enough room for the refrigerant from here, the line set, and the indoor coil to be forced into, into the tubing out here. If you have microchannel coil here, you could accidentally burst it. Tip number two is to make sure that if you have a scroll compressor inside, if you look down from the top and you see a slender but tall round compressor, that's a scroll compressor. So make sure that if it says scroll on the side, don't pump that system down because it uses the refrigerant as electrical insulation between the electrical windings inside the compressor and the ground frame. So if you remove that refrigerant, what's gonna happen is the electrical power is gonna arc from the winding to the ground frame. It's gonna burn that compressor out. So make sure to not pump a system down with a scroll compressor but if it has a reciprocating compressor like this, it's okay. Tip number three is there's a lot of guys out there that will just press this in, this contactor, in with their screwdriver. Make sure to not do that. What you wanna do is you wanna go to the indoor thermostat, set the cooling temperature down real low, and what's gonna happen is the indoor fan's gonna run. So when you're pumping this system down, you're lowering the pressure, right? And a lot of times you'll see if you lower that pressure down, you might have frost on the lines. And you need to be able to boil the refrigerant and get it all into this this outdoor unit. So remember when you're pumping a system down, you are storing all the refrigerant in the line set and indoor coil into the outdoor unit coil and you're storing it and you're locking it in there with your service valve. So make sure to keep your fan running so that there's a heat load at the indoor coil while you're pumping this down and it's also safe so you don't have to press the contactor in. So you could actually just leave this cover in place and then when you're done, you can just go ahead and pull the disconnect outside. Tip number four is you wanna make sure if the unit has pressure switches that you jump those out before pumping this unit down. Otherwise, in the middle of your pump down process, once you lower your pressure, your low pressure switch is going to open up the electrical circuit and your contactor will no longer have power. And so you wanna go ahead and jump those out. I'm gonna show you how to do that coming up, but you can also look down inside of here and take a look and see if you have any pressure switches. So. A lot of the older ones don't have pressure switches. Some of the newer, high efficiency or more expensive units will have pressure switches. Tip number five is you could use quick neck test gauges or electronic probes instead of a manifold gauge set in order to monitor the pressure at the system ports during the pump down. So the, the problem with this is you're gonna to have to purge the air out of these refrigerant hoses before pumping the system down. Otherwise, you're gonna suck the air that's in these hoses into the system once your pressure gets down, say, below zero PSI. The other thing is you wanna make sure that if the system had a leak in it that you do not, or actually at the indoor coil, make sure that you do not pump the system down below zero PSI. But this system right here uh, should be good and shouldn't have any, any leaks. At this point, we're gonna take an up close view over here and how to jump out the pressure switches in the electrical cabinet. And then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna look at the step-by-step -step procedure starting with the connection of the manifold gauge set and hoses and purging the air. Now we are using a gauge set because most people don't have the quick connect test gauges. So I just wanna show this full procedure. Typically you're gonna have a low and a high pressure switch inside. You're not gonna see them unless you look down from the top. And these wires are just gonna go up through the electrical compartment area. So what we're really gonna do is we're gonna gonna jump from this hot wire over to the side of the contactor to bypass this. Cause right now we have two wires coming from the indoor unit. One's the common and it gets directly connected from here to the side of the contactor. And then you have your hot wire right here that travels through this pressure switch, through this pressure switch and over to here. So if one of these opens up during your pump down, it's going to stop the outdoor unit. It's gonna open up the contactor and it's gonna stop your procedure. So we're just gonna jump from here in order to bypass it right over to the side of the contactor. So, you know, I use two ratcheting service wrenches and I use the straight ones typically. I use one for the suction, one for the liquid, and I make sure to have my Allen key right here has a full length. 
If you see the ones that only are partial, partial length, they don't fit in all the liquid line uh, service valves correctly. But anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and connect on our liquid line. Before we do that, we're going to make sure our gauge handles are closed and we want to make sure that all of these are snug. I'm also going to have this in the closed position. This is our yellow service hose. And so here we go. So red on the small liquid line, that's the high pressure side. And now we're gonna connect our blue side right here. This is our low side, our large vapor line. And we're going to keep this shut for now, but what I want to do, this system is equalized. You see it's 100 and right about 115 on, on both gauges. We're going to open both of these at the same time. So we have our refrigerant pushing the air into this yellow hose. And we're going to purge our air out of this hose. So now that our air is purged, we're going to shut our handles. This is very important to make sure that you have your handles shut. Otherwise, you're going to have potentially liquid refrigerant heading into your vapor line while the system's running and that's going to damage the compressor. So now that our handles are shut, our air is purged, we can go ahead inside and turn the, the thermostat on. And what I like to do is I let the system turn on first and then I'll shut my liquid line down. So we turned our thermostat on, now I'm going to push the outdoor disconnect in and we're going to start the unit up. Now that the unit's running, I can go ahead and shut down my liquid line and then we're going to monitor our pressure as the system pumps down and then I can start closing my vapor line. Normally you can just do two fingers like this as far as your ratcheting service wrench in order to close this, but here we are, we're already shut. So that's that. So let's just get a head start on our, our vapor line. Now you can pump this system down and then pull the disconnect and then shut this, but I'd like to try to time it so I can shut this down and then pull the disconnect because there's only a small section from here to the compressor. This system does not have an accumulator. So I pulled the disconnect right there. And so you really want to try to do a pump down in one shot and you want to get it just a little bit below zero PSI so that uh, when the system shuts off and you don't have any liquid refrigerant say in the vapor line and now it's expanding and applying pressure within the system. So you really want to try to do a pump down in one shot and make sure to not pump down below zero PSI Otherwise, you're going to pull air into the system if this system had a leak, but this system did not have a leak. So we should be good. I don't see our vapor pressure rising. So just so you know what I did is I turned the power on, I shut the liquid line first, then I monitored our pressure. I shut this halfway, the vapor line halfway, because remember the refrigerant's getting sucked in through the vapor line. I shut it halfway while the system was running. I monitored the pressure and tried to time it, and then I closed this down um, while I was getting maybe at about 5 PSI, I started closing this down and then it got down to maybe 3 inch HG, uh, which is in the green section. That's below 0 PSI G. Once I got done shutting this fully clockwise, I then pulled the outdoor disconnect. So that's how you pump a system down. So it's been about 12 minutes now and we're still holding about 2 inch HG. So it hasn't risen at all. So if we wanted to uh, reuse the line set here, we could break this slight vacuum with nitrogen. Uh, but otherwise we're done and so if you want to learn more about HVAC you should check out the free resources and the articles we have over at acservicetech.com we also have our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning book we've got a thousand question workbook that covers all the questions that I really want you to know and that's a self-study guide 
And then we have quick reference cards that you can use out in the field and these will hold up real well. They're not paper, they're polystyrene and you can throw them right in the service bag. So make sure you check all this stuff out over at acservicetech.com as well as over on Amazon. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.